Nobody expected to see somebody from India. Shiva Keshavan. Now please prepare. Everybody thinks India is a tropical country until you tell them there's the Himalayas. The spotlight was on me in a sense. I was always in for, for adventure. When I was a kid, I got hurt a lot. So I think this dangerous mix of speed and adventure, I think I found them both in Luge. Uh, so this sled, is what you call a street luge and this is 10, 20 times faster than, this, than the sleds we are used to as kids over here and uh, which is exciting but at the same time you know with all the traffic and the road scene over here it can get a little tricky sometimes. One big similarity with a luge though is that it has no brakes so, <laughs> so that's something that you know we um, kind of can identify with. It was kind of a small uh, sport, you know, close-knit community. It's only since, uh, since I started and, and since a few years before I started that the International Federation was really proactive in getting new athletes in new countries. So, you know, it was after that Jamaican film, that, uh, the, the Hollywood film on the Jamaican school runnings. But that kind of the popularity of that movie, I think it kicked off, uh, you know, a worldwide talent hunt. I need at least five points to qualify for the Olympics in South Korea. It's a complicated procedure, but qualifying points come from World Cup races. There are six races left, and the next race is in Germany. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Luge Weekend here in Altenberg, the last edition in 2017. And now, we will see you so when you're lying on the sled over here, your legs go and go on this, and that's going to steer the sled. The time that you're looking looking to gain or looking not to lose is uh, is very minuscule, and uh, we're talking about thousands, hundreds, tenths of a second that, uh, that you know, really differentiate the, the first from the last. But I know that, you know, odds are stacked up against me because, uh, because of all the support system that I don't have. To be in with a chance to score more than one point, I need to be in the top 17. When I'm going up to the start, when I'm at the handles, there's a lot of things going through my head. Some part of the track that I have to focus on, some curve that I have to improve. And the track is clear. The moment I, I start and I leave the handles, for a moment, my mind goes completely blank. All the things that I think about doing just fade away. I'm just hurling down without any brakes and it's just natural forces pulling. Even though it might be seen as a high adrenaline, high speed sport, you're really trying to stretch time when you're going down the track because there's so much you have to focus on. I'm steering over here, I'm holding up over there. I want to be high, I want to exit left of center. People say, how can you do so much? But that's how time works. It's really subjective. Thank you. 
Rotto tutto. Alla... Hai un, un coso per mettere? Sì, ma sopra quello... E adesso non metti qualcosa? No, lascio seccare un po'. Ah, perché se Antonio eh? arriva... Ma che vedi tu? Mm. Ah, it was... Uh... Like being in a washing machine. I got spun around, thrown to the roof, and slammed my head slammed on the ice. So a lot went on in those few seconds, I guess. But yeah, it's part of the game. Time and speed are interrelated. A run of, of one and a half kilometers would last around 50 seconds. And since it's so difficult to get much uh, track time, through visualization you're able to recreate the emotion or you know whatever your mind goes through during a physical run. And even if you're having some issues somewhere that you can't sort out in the track, sometimes you can sort it out in your mind. I finished 32nd out of the 35 competitors. But with a year to go, I only need two more points to qualify for South Korea. <laughs> 